And first, we're going to hear a presentation and demo from the DSI Labs crew. So Chris, take it away. Thank you, Eugene. So today, I'm going to present to you um, DSI Notes, which is a Web3 native unit of knowledge. Before that, I'm going to zoom back a little bit and talk about the um, tragic state of the scientific record. The scientific record is our greatest achievement as a species. Currently, it is a cloud database with the read and write function entirely owned by Elsevier and Clarivate Analysis. It relies on an obsolete unit, the archaic and solitary PDF. There is no business model for anything besides PDFs. It is fragmented. It is insecure. It, is, it suffers from link rot, content drift. It is also vulnerable to cross-national censorship. Three out of the big four publishers are presently censored in China. And it has a raging replication crisis because of bad incentives. And as a result, public trust in science is fraying. And finally, it is exploitative to scientists. We pay to write on this record. We pay to read on this record. I published a paper in Nature Neuroscience back when I was a scientist. This was before Nature Neuroscience charged for open access $11,800 to peer review a work, to format it, and to put it up on their websites. And even in those days when Nature Neuroscience was exclusively closed access, I still had to pay $2,000. Why? Because I had color figures. So let that sink in for a moment. This system has lost its legitimacy. And it is grand time to create an escape hatch. And this is the mission of DSI. We have to build the infrastructure. We have to build the communities so that we can fork it and we can reclaim our scientific record and secure it for future generations. So what do we have to build? Well, we have to build gateways. We have to build systems for scientists to put their, their works into a decentralized ledger of knowledge, an index of scientific discoveries. We need a Web3 unit of knowledge. We need to upgrade the solitary PDF. We need interops. We need APIs so that we can integrate with the traditional scientific system. It's very important that we add value to the current workflow of scientists. We need a governance system. So we've set up the DSI Foundation, which is a foundation with great meta-scientists and other scientists that help us and advise us on designing better incentives and better systems to reward good science. And finally, we need a place to dream, a place where we can showcase excellent scientific work and illustrate it beautifully so that we can draw people to this mission. And this ledger of knowledge must be curated. And for this, we are building ARCs, autonomous research communities, running DAO stacks, who can operate on composable and securely stored knowledge. And in doing so, recapture the value that they provide by securing information and verifying scientific discoveries. And finally, we need ways to interop with the wider DSI space. And for this, we're very excited to work with Shadi and his team using Holonym to secure scientific identities so that we can create secure funding channels that will bypass the traditional system and go directly to scientists. So let me zoom in on the unit of knowledge. We're all familiar with PDFs. This is how we share our work. This is our token of knowledge as scientists. We need something better than that. We need a Web3 native unit of knowledge. We need to upgrade how we create, how we share, and how we verify knowledge. PDFs, essentially, are held in silos owned by publishers. The PIDs, or persistent identifiers, rely on the DOI system, which has been created 20 years ago by the American Association of Publishers, to have a primary key and to allow them to trade to basically decide who owns what piece of copyright. 
DOIs are insecure. They break. They get crawled constantly. Crossref has a shame list of publishers who have double entries or more for in, in this what basically is a lookup table. We need a better system. And finally, the publishers own the metrics that track attention. They own our citation graphs, which is basically the currency of science. And on top of all of this, they impose upon us a rigid, arbitrary print era formats of arbitrary requirements on length of manuscripts and other things. It's very rigid. And their claim to value, and this is very important, the claim to value of the scientific publishing industries resides in the idea of the version of record. The version of record is the state of the scientific graph of knowledge. It is basically a PDF of record. We need to move beyond that. So what could a Web3 unit of knowledge look like? Well, how about a place where you can put all of your research outputs, including your manuscript, and link them together? so that you have the full history, so that every element that you create as a scientist can gather credit. How about secure PIDs? Persistent identifiers that don't break, that encode the content of the underlying object, and not simply the link to the publisher's website. And these research objects need to be made reproducible. We must facilitate reproducibility and return independent replication as the gold standard for scientific validation. And finally, they must be openly verifiable. Everyone should be able to verify the science that's been, that is posted out there in an efficient way. For me, Web3 is about freedom. And this is also about creating an open, creative, experimental space. This unit of knowledge needs to be something communities can claim for themselves. If you want to do micro-publications, you can do it. If you want to publish reproducible science, reproducible documents, you should be able to do it. It shouldn't be a constraining space, but a place of freedom. And ultimately, the DSI space needs to claim the research object of record as its claim to value in the scientific ecosystem. There's this old concept of reproducible research. The idea is that our PDFs, our manuscripts, are simply front ends. The back end is a database, code, a computational pipeline. All of this is integral to any claims we make as scientists. We must put those into the open domain and connect them to our research outputs. It is very important if the DSI space is to go is to claim legitimacy in the scientific sphere, that we enable and that we facilitate the creation of reproducible research and enable researchers to connect easily their manuscript with all their underlying outputs. And the research object is likewise not a new concept. You have projects like Arrow Crates. The idea is to have a space where you can combine all your out outputs together in a secure way. Now, what is new and what is Web3 native is the data model. And this data model is called IPLD. It's based on the content addressable web. And the idea of IPLD is we can store Merkle DAGs. And these Merkle DAGs will have, will have our, our tamper proof. All the underlying components will not change. They remain cryptographically secured. And you can take these Merkle DAGs and very efficiently index the root node on chain. So I'm going to give you a little demo here. Now I want to stress that what's incredibly important beyond everything I said here is UI and UX. None of this can succeed if we don't provide excellent UX to scientists. And UX is about being in a familiar space, being in a space that is simplified, and enabling cooperation. So here, you have a page of Protocol Labs research. 
They're a Web3 native organization. They've done a lot of the fundamental building blocks of the decentralized web, like IPFS, lib peer to peer So as a researcher, as a scientist, where do I want to go when I'm on a website like this or on any other website that links to academic research? I want to go to the PDF. That's where I feel good. Now, finally, I'm exactly where I want to be. So this is a paper, Snark Pack, Practical Snark Aggregation. Very interesting. It's about scaling snarks. It's a very important contribution to the public good ecosystems of on-chain research. Now, as you can see, this PDF has a mysterious symbol in the corner. What is this? This is a link to the immutable token ID that is stored on chain that links to the Merkle DAG, which contains your research object and all of the components of your research in an immutable and tamper-proof way. And now I can click on this. And oh, I'm back in a PDF viewer. Still feels good. This is a familiar environment. Now what can I do here? Well, there's a couple of differences. You can see at the top, it's Web3 wallet integration. There's also a mysterious symbol on the side. So let's see what's in here. So we have here a research object navigator directly in your PDF viewer. And this research object navigator has att attributes of your research object. It has information about all the validation trail that your research has gone through. Has it been peer reviewed? Has it been published in a conference? Are the artifacts reproducible? All of this is stored transparently in that data structure that is queried on chain. And now you have all the components of your research. And researchers take great pains to create things outside of the PDF. They have, they make slide decks to explain their results. They also do video presentations to talk about what they've done. All of this can be aggregated now in a single place. And it's very easy to do. This is the other thing. We need to simplify the experience. Editing, adding components should be something that is extremely straightforward. Copy links, drag and drops. It has to be that simple for users to adopt it. What else do you have here? You have a history and you have source. If you go on history, ah, finally, GitHub for scientists. You have the trace of all the previous versions, all the updates you might have done to your work. And it's all transparent and accessible by reading the Merkle root that is indexed on chain. You also have source. Those are all the metadata all the author contributions, their identities, their organization, tags. And now, on top of all of this, you can add annotations to your work. You can take all of your component and start speaking to the public or creating reproducible documents. So for example, what are trusted ceremonies in ZK Snarks and why are they important? Well, now as a researcher, I can add an annotation very easily into my manuscript. This allows me to go direct to the public with my research. We also have support for LaTeX and Markdown. You can add beautiful equations to complement your work. And most importantly, and this is where I really want to put the emphasis, we need a reproducible document stack that is Web3 native. So what do we have here? In your PDF, you can now embed the CIDs. These are the persistent identifiers, the encrypted content that links to the component of your research object. And you can embed them directly into these PDFs. And that also means social interoperability. You can, share, you can keep sharing these PDFs like you do 
as scientists. And anyone can click on these embeddings to query the ledger. And so here, you have to replicate the benchmarking results shown in this figure. Execute the script, generate figure two. This is the key result of this paper, is showing the improvements in computational efficiency for ZK SNARKs. Now, in your PDF viewer, you have an IDE, which allows you to reproduce these results. And we can run this code in a Docker, which contains your code, your environment, your data. We're working with Protocol Labs on a solution called COD, Compute Over Data, which will allow researchers around the world to use decentralized compute, to compute new model, to do their work, but also to create reproducible manuscript like what you've seen here. And this is very important. You have organizations like the ACM or the Open Science Foundation that have been trying for a long time to promote good research. They have been trying for a long time to promote the sharing of research artifacts, the opening of your data, the opening of your method, to share all of this. And they've created badges. Badges that say, well, artifacts available. Badges that say, well, your artifacts are functional. Results reproduced. Results replicated. There's over 1,500 papers in the ACM conferences that use the ACM badging system. Unfortunately, these badges remain on the pages of the conferences. Now, they can be part and permanently tied to your research object. And best of all, they are easily auditable because all of the criteria necessary to prove that you deserve these badges are all within this research object. And something that's even more important and is validation, right? There's incredible info hazard out there. Maybe some of you remember, you know, the Lancet article from Peter Dazak saying that anyone out there even entertaining the idea of the lab leak hypothesis is a conspiracy theorist. How valuable would it be if anyone in the world could openly verify such claims? So, here, for example, I can openly verify research by adding a replication grant that will be handled and dispensed to an ARC, an autonomous research community. And the value of this will be returned to scientists. These validation grants are NFTs, and as you see, it's being added here. They will be added to your wallet. I also want to say that these research objects themselves, they are um, non-transferable, non-fungible tokens, and this is how we handle versioning. So what do we have here? So we propose a Web3 native unit of knowledge. A unit of knowledge that allows to easily obtain proof of reproducibility with executable capsules stored in Docker containers using decentralized compute. Secure time capsules that are permanently stored that depend only on the survival of the underlying networks on which they're built. They're resistant to link rot. Storage is decentralized. They also allow us to form permanent knowledge graphs. CID graphs are better than PID graphs. CID graphs, content, addressable, content identifiers, do not break. They're tied to an immutable token ID. And this allows research objects to provide incredible metadata for AI readiness, for machine readability. The fact that all of this content is tied together and linked gives us the ability to gain co valuable context 
And finally, they're openly verifiable. Anyone can add a, replic a validation grant. Anyone can say, I want this finding to be independently replicated. And here, I'll put one Ethereum in the pool. And finally, I think we need to dream. This is a project of such magnitude. The idea of forking the scientific record, of creating the necessary infrastructure to create this escape hatch and to onboard scientists around the world and to onboard the people. We need a place to dream. We need an open metaverse library, a place where the best science and the best research object can be showcased to inspire the world to inspire future generation and to show that self-reproducible, openly verifiable time capsules of knowledge can be created and that people will create them and that those that create them will be rewarded and that they will be accessible to all of humanity. So thank you. We'll be launching on nodes.dsci.com and thank you to my fantastic team, Sina for DevOps, IPFS Ops, Brian, Science, Philip, UI, Andrew and Bean, community, Eric, event, organization, Georgia, and onboarding ops, Carla, thank you so much for what you've done so far. Thank you, we grab that. Thank you, sir. All righty. Let's, yeah, let's.